How many of y'all got your ugly ball? Yes, sir. I need you to take your ball in and hold it and keep it for the rest of this year. Amen. No, I just, we're gonna show you, I'm going to show you what that's about. Just don't lose it. Don't put it up under your seat. That's so important. That's probably the most important thing I'm going to give you all year. That's probably the most important thing I'm going to give you all year. I'm going to show you what it is. So listen, go ahead and open your Bibles. I love you, baby. I got a dream built over there. Give my wife a couple of praise. Woo! I love it with all my heart. Listen, I done fell in love with her this past month. We've been in the same house with each other for 24 hours a day. I didn't go to work for three months. I've been working. I've been getting paid, but I ain't been to work. And I've been looking at it every day. And I fell in love with it even more. And I love you, baby. With everything, with all my heart. And ever and ever. Amen. I love you, y'all. I tell you what. Y'all got a good first lady. Man. Y'all do. I'm going to lie to you, dude. She's been holding me up. And listen, I found out in this last season. We're going to talk about it more. We're going to get there. But every husband, every wife, listen to me. Listen to me, Holy Spirit. Don't you ever get in competition with your wife. Don't do it, or your husband. How many of y'all know me and my wife just compete against each other? We was immature. We didn't know. We like we thought my dream was bigger than her dream. We try to compete. We're gonna talk about this at the Willisha workshop. My wife now motivates the heck out of me. This whole December, I didn't have to get up. I didn't have to go to work. I had to get up and get on my computer. And I had to preach. When my wife feet hit the ground, I said, let's go, let's go, I gotta get up. Why? Because I wouldn't let her out serve me. Mm-hmm. That's not competition, that's motivation. She get up praying, I'm going to go, go pray. I get up praying, I look up, my wife is the type of person, she don't get up early. Every day in December, I get the ground, I start praying, I'm listening to the living room, she praying. Why? Because you realize that if she's moving, it's motivating me to get up and move too. Uh-huh. And baby, I want to let you know, I told her this morning, I don't think I told her all month, I told her this morning, baby, he motivated me all month. And listen, she's been so driven. This book she's going to write, and she's going to release, church her, but help. This woman has not, she don't watch TV, she don't do that. She's tight. She motivated to get it out in February. And listen, y'all don't want to miss it. I've been getting snippets here, snippets there. Why? Because she's called this. So I'm going to say it right now. She already jumped. I told you, lady, last year, the only reason I'm jumping because she jumped. Well, what the heck, I'm going to jump too. So I want to look at your wife, look at your husband, and say, don't, don't be in competition. Don't think you got to make her follow you or make him follow you. Just thank God they jumping. Yeah. And while she jumping, I'm going to jump. And I'm believe what, listen, listen, listen. If she jumped that direction, I jumped that direction. If we connected, we're going to cover everything in between. Uh-huh. If she's connected to me and she jumped that way, I'm connected and I jumped that way. If we jump, everything in between is going to be my children covered. My grandchildren covered. The members of this church covered. Man. So stop trying to get everybody to jump in one direction because you can't cover much if you jump. Come get your shot there. God put a jump. Ju- mm, I'm about to get my sermon. It's time out. This is, I gotta get to Melissa. Real quick, real quick, brother, De- brother De- uh, Darius, go real quick to Matthew 16. Brother Darius, don't go too far. I'm gonna need you to help me out of this thing. You get my text message? Yep. Matthew 16, 14. Ah, Jesus. I thank God for them 30 days. Matthew 16, 14. Keep playing. Say, don't, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Take it. Me and Brother David will get sick one day. Matthew 16, 14, 16, 14, 16, 14. Go ahead and go to the 13th verse. We're going to go from the 13th to the 15th verse, Brother Darius. Did I give you that? Try to go and speak 13 verse in there. Anybody miss hearing me preach? Yes, sir. I'm going to say right now, I know y'all got the Bibles in hand. Just give a foot stomp for every minister who preach. Man. Y'all do the dynamic, dynamic job. I'm going to ask y'all one more favor, though. Can I ask you one favor? And everybody in the church get in the spirit. Right now, now we're going to have trials just coming up uh, Wednesday for the praise team. If you want to get a praise team, come try out. Right now, me and my wife, we cannot leave out of town. Because y'all see the person who's running the service, my children up in the service. We got people running parts, but the worship will be out of place. Can y'all pray that we get to the point that we can leave again? Yes, sir. I really want to go on vacation this year. So that means I need somebody to try for the praise team. Amen? Man. And listen, if you can hold a note, we're going to let you sing, all right? <laughs> Death and folks, can, folks can't be choosy. I can't be choosy. Like, you can get that note right now. If you held it, <laughs> you just held it. I mean, just, y'all saw, listen, if I can sing up here on Christmas Day, we're talking about releasing a Christmas CD next year. <laughs> y'all better not laugh. That can hurt my feelings. <laughs> you if got I, it, bitch. Listen, I, I sounded good. You got it, bitch. That sounded good. I'm like, look at that. All I have to do is get to that low. Real quick, real quick. Everybody ready? Ready? She get two verses though. Mark 16. I want you also Matthew 16. Give Mark 5 and 15. We gonna go there. 
if you listen, starting today, I want to thank God for Sister Lee. She has adamantly began to work on the app. The app will be consistently updated for, for now on. And so if you go to the connection part of your app and look at Sunday, my notes will be there. And you'll be able to download them after that. Now, if you don't use them today, it's going to be deleted. So you just keep on, we're just, we're going, and Brit, Sister Brenda is going to take over the, the website. All right? Y'all not ready. I'm excited. Ready? Read. When, no, no, go to 13, 13, 13, 13. Ready? Read. When Jesus came to the region of, yeah, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say son of man is? 14th verse. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Keep going. 15 verse, ready to read. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? That's so important. That one verse is going to set us up for this week and also prepare us for next week. I want you to read again. One more time. Ready to read. But what about you, he says. Who do you say I am? Go to Mark real quick, 5 and 15. I'm excited in this place. Good God. Ready to read. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in his right mind. Somebody say, he's not possessed no more. He's not possessed no more. I'm not drinking no more. I'm not drinking no more. I'm not cussing like I used to. Like I am not the man I used to be. Man. I am not the woman I used to be. Yeah. One more time. Ready to read. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man I used to be. Right. They saw the woman I used to be. They saw me as the person I used to be, but I'm not that no more. Thank you, Lord. They saw the person I used to be, but I'm not that no more. And I'm thinking to myself, is it worth being something else if all they see me is who I was? Uh huh. Hey, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. One more time, 15 verse. Ready to read. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in his right mind. And they were what? Afraid. They were what? Afraid. Can I tell you somebody scared of you? Can I tell you somebody scared of you? Some of the greatest energy is potential energy, kinetic energy. Static energy is what the devil wants. You could be, should be, but ain't. Connect means just wait. Here I come. And that's the afraid of. Everybody would have to realize and say, who? Who? Am. Am. I. I. Ready. One more time, somebody say, who? Who? Am. Am. Have a quick seat, and our subject today is going to be forget what they say. Everybody say, let me say, forget, forget what, they say. what they say. Can we talk real quick? Can I just jump in this real quick? This title, Who Am I? Write that down real quick. I'm trying to move expeditiously. Brother Jerry, you bring me a bottle of water, Brother Jerry, real quick. Somebody say, Who am I? Who am I? If you look at this question real quick, thank you so much. And for those also, leadership uh, uh, works, leadership. Um, Leadership orientation will start next Sunday. If you're supposed to be there, you'll get an email. Amen. Somebody say, who am I? Yeah. Now, who am I is a question of identity. Get your black balls. Get them close to you. It's so important. Have them close to you, but don't have them in hand. Just have them close to you, because I'm going to get you grabbing in a second. Somebody say, who am I? Who am I? Is a question, is a question of identity. Of identity. I'm going to teach you something real quick. The word identity. The word identity. Some people would like to say, that your identity is an accumulation of your experiences. What the world? Okay. Somebody say, some people like to say. Some people like to say. My identity. My identity. Is an accumulation. Is an accumulation. Of my experiences. Of my experiences. That's some people. Some people. Accumulation of my experiences. I don't like that definition though. The reason I don't like that definition is this here. It's because if my identity is an accumulation of my experiences, that means before I had my first experience, I didn't have an identity. Some people take this into consideration and what they do when the mom is pregnant with a baby, they'll begin to read to the baby, they'll begin to play music to the baby because they want to shake the child's identity before the child even born. And so they begin, as a child, before the baby's born, building an identity for him. And then when he's born, they begin to teach him certain things and certain traits because usually the person trying to teach that child is trying to live vicariously through their child. And so they begin to build an identity for their child they give them experiences like maybe they want to play sports. Maybe they throw the first thing to them is a basketball. Maybe the first thing they throw to them is a football. Maybe the first thing they, they give them is a piano. What they're trying to do, somebody says, is build an identity. So some people believe that, that an identity is an accumulation of our experiences. I don't like that because, like I said before, if that's the case, before you had your first experience, you was nothing. 
And then not just that, every experience after that has defined you. If you're born in a house where the father was an abusive, that's your experience, and now you're an abuser. Born in a house, maybe an uncle or cousin touched you and you were molested, maybe now you're just a broken, molested person. Maybe you was even born in a house where everybody went to church, and all you are now is a church boy. Someone said, good mm. or bad? Or bad. That means your experiences have now defined you. Have now, can I tell y'all sometimes being just a church boy still ain't good enough? Mm. Listen to me. So I don't like the definition. And I know the definition is not true, mama. I know for a fact it's not true. Why? Because Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah something in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Somebody go real quick. Or Darius put Jeremiah 1 and 5 up real quick. I know for a fact that's not true because what God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Somebody read this from ready? Read. He said, before you was even in the belly, I knew who you was. Keep going. Therefore you were born. I set you apart. Keep going. I anointed you as a prophet to the nation. Before Jeremiah was even a seed in his mama's belly, he was a prophet. So that means that you are not a summation of your experiences. That means that, listen to me. Someone say, I am not. I am not what I've been through. What I've been through. Someone say, I am not. I am not what I've been through. What I've been through is just a tool for me to use. Listen to me. Yes, God. So, so I know it's not the fact because it says that he was an, he was having an identity before he was even born. So listen. So in that case, I have my hand a little marble here. It's a marble. I believe that who we are is at the core of everything we've been through. I believe who we are is at the core. I believe the day you was born, the devil started attacking your identity. I believe the, the very day you were born, because the Bible says that we was born in what? We was born in what? We were born in sin and shaped in what? So I said, we were born? We have to have Bible study. See, everybody did Bible study this Wednesday. I need every brother here this week. We have brothers, Bible said, and I got some announcements on your brother here. But somebody said, we was born in what? Sin. And shaped in what? Sin. We was born in what? Sin. And we were shaped in what? Sin. So I believe at the very core, and everybody hear me out right now, Holy Spirit. At the very core of who we are is what God called you to be. Very core. So I believe this marble represents your Jeremiah 1 and 5. We just saw that, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Someone said, that's, that's what God knew about me. Uh -huh. Not just your Jeremiah 1 and 5, also your Jeremiah 29 and 11. Give me Jeremiah 29 and 11. Ready to read. For I know the plans I have for you, there's the, Lord, there's the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you what? Hope and future. I believe this is your Jeremiah 29 and 11. Not even just your Jeremiah 29 and 11, I believe it's also your Romans 8 28. Go ahead and give me Romans 8 28 real quick. Ready? Read. And live when I knew the hold up, Romans 8 28. And we know that all no things no. works for the good of those who do what? No. Who have been called according to his what? Purpose. Before you was born, I believe this here is who you are. And the day you walked out your mama's womb, you begin to get attacked by your experiences in life that the devil meant for your bad. But God meant for your what? So if it's for your good, that means it's a, good, it's a useful utensil, not an identity. I told you a man sitting in my office about three months ago, he was so depressed because he couldn't go to and play football. And he was so depressed because he felt like football was his what? Football was his what? And I told him, son, football is just a tool that's supposed to help you pay your bills. If you lose that tool, pick up another one, because all it was supposed to do is pay your bill, not make who you you are. Uh -huh. The problem is, many of us are taking our iniquities and our sins and put them on our identity, and God said, no, our identity is in that, not that. Yeah. So I believe, it goes like this here, that the first thing you went through, this is who you were. Before you walked out your mama's womb, you were so innocent. And it's the first thing you went through begin to wrap you, inform you, and now maybe you were born in a house where everybody was poor. Maybe he's born in a house, like I said, where daddy was an alcoholic. Maybe he's born in a house where mom went to church. Whatever you was born into, that formed you. The next thing you went through, maybe you began to play sports, and maybe you 
began to have sex. Maybe somebody molested you, and that became who you are. And then you went through, maybe you graduated, maybe you didn't graduate, maybe you got your first job, and you began to get wrapped in all these things. And, and listen, and what God showed me is that what happens is, is that the day you decide to walk in what you've been wrapped in, you seal who you are. Then I'm gonna walk in this person been molested. I'm gonna walk in this person who's broke because I took my experience as my identity. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in this person who don't have a college degree. I'm gonna walk in this person who's single. I'm gonna walk in this person because what I've been through is who I am, and now I look like something that's been formed and shaped. And so what happens is most of us is like this here, and we look like what we've been through. And we walk like what we've been through. We talk like what we've been through. But God says, it's something on the inside of them that's been wrapped up in you. And I've been calling out when you go to certain places, you feel differently. You go places, you look different. But you don't, I can't do that. Why? Because I don't look like what I've been through. So every last one of y'all got this little black ball. I told you it's the most valuable thing because I want you to that black ball and look at this and don't you dare wrap it. But tell yourself, something's on the inside of me. And just because it's been wrapped up in what I've been through, don't mean that's who I am. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is just what I sealed. The last thing you accept as your reality is your tape moment. That, well, this is all I am. For a long time, all I was was a boy who graduated from Coast Spring, who was good at school, and who now drink and sleep with every woman I can because I'm trying to find me another woman. And I kept walking in that, and then one day. I decided to say, you know what, that's not going to seal me. I said, you know, I'm going to go to church and find out who I really am. I loosened the tape up. Because I'm telling you, see, what happens? Some of y'all think that you just get sealed in, in bad moments. Some of y'all get sealed in good moments. Yeah. Some people still sealed as being a good football player in Cold Spring. You don't realize, boy, you graduated 10 years ago. Why are you still think about your football yeah. moments? Yeah. Some of y'all just sealed up in the fact that you, the fact that you graduated from college, but you still ain't working, but you still walking around bragging your degree, but you sealed that up. Yeah. So I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper, to harm you, plans to give you what they expect to end. Can I tell you a secret? What's on the inside of you is your junk. Yeah. That's the junk. Yeah. And can I tell you a secret? That, that, listen, listen, you will never reach the end of your junk. You just jump once and you just, because this is, the inside of you is your final call. But the inside of you is calling you to your next destination. Yeah. You will never reach it because your journey is not a destination. It's a journey. And listen, I'm telling you, the what's on the inside of you is a call. And can I tell you, I've made multiple jumps along the way. Yeah. I just have to loosen the tape up. And realize I'm not going to just sit there. Because what I have really true for right now, every now and then I get a little tape. I mean, I hear it, but you don't because I don't want to get sealed up. But I need every experience. Yeah. Call to all joy. Yeah. Those who follow the diamond's temptations. Yeah. So I know the plans I have for you, Roman, everything works together for the good of those. God said, I'm going to use every tool I gave you. Yeah. Don't get sealed in it, though. Yeah. 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 Can I help you out I'm not done. So listen, listen, listen. So what happens is, a good, a good jumper realized the last thing I went through was supposed to be something I'm going to use in my next jump. Mm -hmm. Whenever I went through, and, and like I told you, I was less of a little boy. Now, if I choose to, I haven't chosen to yet. I can mention to somebody about being molested, mm -hmm. but I can't do it until I get it out of my system. Yeah. Yeah. But I do let it seal me. Yeah. Like y'all didn't know, yeah, I was. 19 year old boy. And don't try to figure it out, just pray for me. Yeah. But it didn't seal me. Yeah. But can I tell you something? Just because that didn't seal me, don't mean something else didn't? Yeah. So don't laugh and point at folks' sealing moments. Yeah. You pray that it don't seal them. Yeah. It don't kill them. So listen, so my, 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 my responsibility for the next three weeks, see, my goal is to eventually get to the point to where you're so adamant that you know what's on the inside of you, mm -hmm. to where nothing ever see you again. Yeah. You look at it, this opportunity just caught me up right now, but I'm not going to stay there for long. Yeah. You, you listen, every now and then you take a time out, but don't take a step out. Don't do that. Take a time out, say, you know what? I realize I've been hit. I realize I've been scarred. I realize I've been abused. I realize I've been threatened. It's true. Yeah. Don't move beyond it because it's going to sit there and become a burden. Sit there, deal with it for a moment, but don't Jesus. It's something on the inside of me. Yes. 
that caused me to jump from being in the world to being in church, and it caused me to jump from being in the church to being a minister, it caused me to jump from being a minister to a preacher, it caused me to jump from being a preacher to a pastor, it caused me to jump from being a pastor to a friend of a fellowship, it caused me to jump from a fellowship to being a bishop, it caused me to jump from a job to an entrepreneur. I got something on the inside. It's calling me to get me. It's not calling me to something. It's calling me through something. Uh, okay. See, the problem is, you think you're going to have a final jump? No, that's not your final jump. But baby, if you get used to jumping, jumping, you get easy. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say something on the inside of me. Something on the inside of me. So I need all y'all to know in that little black ball. I promise you, if you don't believe me, ask one. She up and wrap every last one of them. I promise you, there's something inside of there. Don't even, don't try to test it. Just believe me. Something inside of there. I want you to look at it. Every time you get sealed, put it somewhere where you don't forget it. Put it in your sock drawer. You got to get socks every day. And you pull it out and look at it and say, you know what? My boss cussed me out and talked about me. And I was finna quit. But no, I ain't. Right. There's something inside. Like it. My last boyfriend talked about me and used me. And I'm going to stay single and say, uh-uh. Something on the inside of me. Yes. I was about to start that job and start that, that, uh, that, that business, and, and I had one brick, brick wall and another brick wall, and I said, No, forget it. He said, No, um, there's something. There's something. There's, listen, and I've been, my wife been telling me, I thank God for uh, uh, help me because she's been trying to tell me, Boy, I see something on me. Yeah. See, sometimes you gotta be around people who see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're around folks who don't yeah. see, you gotta get away from them because they cannot do your son. They ask you to get They They'll call you what they want you to be. They won't tell you what I see in you. I better stop because I'm giving the next week's sermon. But someone say that's something on the inside. Ryan, to come to the outside. And I'm ready to jump this year. Somebody say something on the inside. Something on the inside. Why did you tell me there's something in you? Y'all, I love, listen to me, I love consulting. I love it. I do it for free. I go anywhere, someone say consulting. Consulting. It's teaching folk what you learned so they ain't got to go through what you've been through. I walk into business right now and tell them everything I know. <coughs> Bishop told me, son, God going to bless you. Why? Because he can trust you. Uh -huh. What did he meant? He can trust me to tell my story. If I tell it where I go, I'm going to break folks out. And if I break folks out, God says, I can trust you to go through again because you're going to break me out next level. That's why I went to Jocelyn Business and Jocelyn Tilly called up. And I spent a whole week, took vacation to tell her how to get her business. Where's it? Because why? There's something. Mm -hmm. Why you have to get your own fellowship? Because that was business vision. I, I can't break out folks in this fellowship. I had to get a, a fellowship where I can tell pastors how to come out because why? I want to help folks not go through what I went through. Yeah. Right. I know who I am. Can I tell you? Who I am could be used in every room. Yes, sir. Your gifts shouldn't be locked in church. Your gifts shouldn't be locked in church. Listen, listen. Tasha Cobb said I can sing in church. Dog God, I can sing in the streets. Why? Because my gifts will make what? Room for me. Should not take me up. If you're a church boy, I don't care. Go outside and be the best church boy. But don't be locked up in what you call to be. Somebody said to me, something. So I said, something. Y'all know, right? So I said, something on the inside. Trying to get to the outside. So I let people name who you are. Tell them quick, you don't know me. You don't know me. You don't know me. They'll try to, you was real good at that. Word is a key word. That's not who I am no more. I'm bigger than that. Y'all, I'm wealthy. Yes. Yes. Amen. Somebody, somebody got mad. No, no, no. Yes. yes. See, don't get it twisted. Amen. Somebody say wealth yeah. is 10% money. It's 10% money. 90% lifestyle. 90% lifestyle. lifestyle. Money don't make me. My lifestyle do. Yes. But everywhere I'm going, I'm blessed. Yes, so going God. in and coming out. Oh, yes. I believe yes, it. Yes, so God. Somebody say that's why you shouldn't be on looking for yoked. Don't hook up to somebody because you want a sex partner. Don't do that. Uh -uh. You don't need a sex partner. You need a business partner. Yes. For benefits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. I got in the spirit. I have to back in spirit. Someone say you need a sex partner. You know, you need a business partner with benefits. 
So she's my business partner with benefits. And listen, when I feel like I want to quit, she say, boy, don't you, don't you do that. And I wasn't a good partner for a long time because I thought her dream should supposed to come under my dream. And I was suppressing her dream. And to God, broke her down and said, that ain't your God, I am. And God, I so sick when she looked at me and said, Joker, you don't know me. It's something on the inside of me trying to get to the outside. I had to step back and let her, let her and God go through this problem that they had to go through. But what burst out was a woman who knew her worth. You know, yes. I don't tell you you got to get first aid because it just sounds good. I seen her come out of it. Yes. Listen, can I get to my lesson? Yes. So my, my goal my goal is to teach you to understand who am I? What is there on the inside of me? What is there? And listen, we find out over here real quick, go to Matthew. Go to Matthew, I think it's, was it Matthew? Brother Darius, help me out. Matthew 16 and 15. Go to 15 verse. Can I teach real quick? Everybody agree they got someone inside of them. Yes, sir. I want to make sure I'm going to go no further. 15 verse. Listen to this. This one verse sets us up for this week, but establishes a premises for next week. Because this is Jesus who rolled up on his boys and said, hey, quick question. And this is a dangerous question for every entrepreneur. This is a dangerous question for every woman who's single. This is a dangerous question for anybody who just got saved. You can't handle the answer. You can't handle the answer. If you're a good preacher, I tell every preacher, when you get through preaching, don't ask somebody how was the sermon. You can't handle. You can't handle the answer. I'm a good cook. And I make sure I look at your face before I ask you how you like my food because I can't handle you telling me you don't like my food. Can't handle it. I can't. My mother-in-law, no fault. I got cooked for uh, seven, up cake, seven years ago. I've been trying to overcome it seven years ago. But for Thanksgiving, she finally ate my cake. And she's like, it's mm, mm, good. Because I couldn't handle the fact that she didn't like what she saw. So I said, you, you, this is one of the most dangerous questions you can ever ask anybody on your journey to find out who you are. Yeah. Why? Because the answer may define your next move. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. 15 verse, now go back to, go back to thir 13 verse real quick. I gotta go to the original question so they have to know what I'm talking about. 13 verse real quick. I know Brother Daddy, Brother Daddy, Bishop, you said 15. 13 real quick, 13. When Jesus came, ready to read, when Jesus came to the region of C C C uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't, don't. Girl, did they like, they like how? You don't even know if you know who you are. If you don't know who you know who you are, don't let them define you. You were just responding on a gut feeling and hoping it come out to be reality. Don't. Jesus. That's dangerous. So he gets his answer. And if I was Jesus, I got mad. What do you mean, John? I'm better than John. John never walked on water. Who ain't? John never healed the blind. You ever thought John just said it to me? Don't you, don't you, don't you get caught. No, 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 no. You don't know who I am. So he said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah. Yeah. I am the son of God. How they gonna put Elijah? That's who I am. Somebody said, if you can't handle it, you can't handle it. Don't ask it. Don't ask. I'm gonna tell all y'all. Don't ask. Don't even ask. Because this is the next thing he did to find my son for the day. Scratch it, scratch it, scratch it. I mean, forget what they say. Who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. I told you I'm giving you the sermon for the day, but preparing you for next week. Next week, I'll say, listen to what they say who know you. Yeah. But today is, forget what they say who don't know you. Okay. Someone say, forget, forget what they say. Everybody say, forget, forget what, they say. what they say. They are the tape. Because all they see is a tape that you locked yourself in. Some of them is the paper. Because some of them wrapped you up. But don't them know the marble. Because they were never God made you who you are. Someone say, forget. Yeah. Can I preach today? I want to go home. Can I preach today? Yes, sir. Somebody say, forget. Forget. What, what they, they say. say. Right now, I want to forget real quick. I miss preaching, y'all. I thank y'all for covering, but this is what I'm called to do. Yes, sir. Somebody forget. Forget. 
The word forget means that by definition, write it down, don't miss this, put out of one's mind. Cease to think of or consider. Put out of your mind, put it out, don't even think about it, don't consider it. Somebody say, put it out your head. Put it out your head. I won't tell you to forget a whole lot. I won't because you can't forget everything. You need to know where you come from so you know where you're going. But some stuff you need to forget, you need to just totally erase it. Somebody say, you don't forget what you went through, but forget what they say about it. Forget what they say about it. Don't forget what you went through, because if you forget what you went through, you go back through it. But forget what they got to say about it. Listen, look and say it best. What you think about me ain't none of my business. Ain't none, listen, if, I, if I'm cooking and you don't like it, ain't none of my business. Can I tell you something? Some of y'all dream is as big as cold spring. As my thoughts in cold spring can tell you about your dream. But if you're dreaming bigger than cold spring, thoughts in cold spring can tell you about your dream. <coughs> Somebody say, if, listen, if I care about what cause me, think I wouldn't be here preaching. Jesus. Why? Because Jesus can go back to Jerusalem. Why? Because I know you. Yeah. You ain't nothing but a carpenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you knew me. Yeah. You don't know me. Yes, Since then, I changed. Yes. But can I tell you, you ain't got time to fight and tell folks that. Right. The longer you spend time trying to explain to your last transition is when you lose the time trying to, because somebody else is going to need you to explain. Else, so I ain't got time to watch my feet. Out of your mind. The word what? The word what is referring to the whole or an amount. To the whole or the amount. Someone say everything. Everything. The word say, I like that. I need to stop it. You took notes. Take notes now. This is very important. You want to cuss me out? Tell me what they say. Bishop, they say shut up. Well, they say I don't care. Amen. Why? Because you need to know who they is. Amen. Now, the word they, by definition, this happened in the Bible so far? Yes, sir. Well, they, by definition, is a general reference to a group of people. A general reference to a group of people. So we need to categorize they. We need to categorize them, Brother Ken. And so in this reference to this series, we're going to make three different categories of they. The first category of they are the people who knew you. The people who knew you. <clears throat> now listen, can I help you out? Don't get mad. Don't get mad over the people who knew you. I told you a long time ago that if you want to be set free, you must gird yourself up, but, but, but put a belt, a breastplate of righteousness, but put a belt of somebody say, salvation and truth. Why okay. so truth? If you don't walk in your truth, the devil gonna remind you of your truth. There's no power in lie on you. So the folks who knew you ain't lying on you. They're just telling you and everybody else what you don't want them to know. Someone say what they say. Say, ain't a lie. Ain't a lie. It's just the past. <coughs> it's the past. different between the truth and fact. Fact is what the truth it was. Fact is is what it is now. Fact is, I'm a preacher. Truth is, I used to love some Hennessy. I can't take that back. I can't. I was at Mother's house the other day, and she made me a tiny. I had to pray. <laughs> I have to pray. I go to Mother's house, she makes some pecan pie. I have to pray. That pecan pie is the strongest gin pie I ever heard in my life. Why? Because I know who I was. All right. I know who I was. And I ain't trying to go back. Amen. Somebody said, I ain't trying to go back. I ain't trying to go back. And can I tell you something? Somebody else know who you was. Yes. yes. And they ain't ashamed to tell everybody else about your business. Yes. Especially when your business make their business look bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She thinks she's somebody because she got a man. I mean, when she ain't had no man. Mm -hmm. I mean, me and her. Uh -huh. Don't get mad because you're still single, boo. Yeah. <laughs> I got my man now. I love you. I'm praying for your man, too. Can I tell you a secret? Don't shut him up. Forget about it. But don't shut him up. <coughs> <coughs> because they're making you look yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're making you look good. Yeah. As long as you don't go back and make your good look evil, yeah. right. don't shut them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, man, she looking real bad, or he looking real bad. They keep talking about her, but I ain't seen her yet. Yeah. I've been watching her on Facebook for two months. Yeah. And look like her marriage is pretty good. Yeah. Look like she's going to church. Girl, she said that new car God blessed them with. Don't 
gonna shout them out? I gotta keep preaching. I gotta keep preaching. I gotta keep preaching. Somebody say they. They. The first group of great they is the people who knew you. The second group of they are the people who know you. And the third group of group of they is the people who need you. Know how to categorize them. The first group of they we're gonna use today is the people who somebody say knew you. Knew you. We're gonna deal with next week people who know you. And in general, we're gonna deal with the fact of the other group, people who need you. Them they need you to keep your head because they need you to keep doing what you're doing because they watching you so they yes. can be changed. Yeah. So I say the first group, first group is the people who knew you. So what I'm saying today is forget what when I'm saying forget what they're saying, I'm saying put out of your mind the things that people, the things people who knew you were saying about you. So I say put out of your mind, put out of your mind. what people who knew you is saying about you. Saying about you. Can I preach real quick? And the best example I can find out to preach this lesson was a man who was possessed with a legion of demons. Legion of demons. Mark 5 and 15. Go to real quick, Brother Darius. Mark 5 and 15. I need, if you got something inside of you, don't listen to this sermon from nobody else but yourself. You need to hear this. Because what happens is you're trying to jump, but the weight of false opinion is holding you down. You know it's something inside of you, but you let them be wrapped up by what folks think about you. And I realize it's real. That's one of the hardest things to overcome. It's not addiction, it's opinions. If people didn't have opinions, addiction would be free. But it's your opinion that puts me back to my addiction. But it ain't worth it anyways, man. Folks don't even believe me. I might as well go back and do what I used to do. Someone say, free me from folk. Free me from folk. So listen, listen. So the best way I can find this sermon was with this guy. And it's 15 verse. And this lesson teaches me three things or three reasons why I got to forget what they say. Three reasons. I'll, I'll give them to you one by one, but I'm reading to you. Why? When they came to know Jesus, to see Jesus now you got to understand, this guy had a legion of demons with him. He was cutting himself, scraping himself. He was chained up. He was ripping up his clothes. He was, wasn't in his right mind. Somebody say who I was. Who I was. Now think about your used to. Think about your used to. All of us got a past. Some of us got a present. But every last one of us got a future. Some say who, 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 who I was. This is, think about it. All he knew. At this moment, this guy, now I'm going to go back to this here, but he jumped to his 6th through 12th verse, and we find him in the 15th verse. In the 15th verse, we find him with an audience of they. Some say we find him with an audience. Found him with an audience. Of they. Of they. And these they are the people who knew him. So we see here, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by a legion of demons sitting there dressed in his right mind. And they were afraid. This lesson teaches me, this scripture teaches me three things about the people and why I gotta forget what they say. Write this down. The first reason why we gotta forget what they say, because number one, they only know your past. It's not their fault. Someone say they only, they only know my past. Know That's all they know. That's all they know. <coughs> write it, write it down. They only know my past. When you say it like that, baby, you can't get mad at them. All they know is when I was out there sleeping around. All they know is when we were going to club together. I got mad at them for holding me back for something they don't even know the answer to. Someone say no. No. The word no by definition is gnosko. Gnosko. I'll spell it for you one day, not today. <laughs> or the word I want to put no, they only remember your past. They only remember your past. I had no earlier, but as I was getting ready for this coming out, I still had a chance to remember. They will remember, I want you to write that down, means recollect. Recollect. R E C O L L E C T. Now listen to me. R E C O L L E C T. See, I want everybody to jump, but I can't just tell you to jump. Because like I got a lot of baggage on you. So I'm spending the first three series is trying to get you ready to jump. So I'm not going to just throw you out there prematurely. I looked at a little film of these guys skydiving. I told my wife I want to go skydiving. How are we going to go skydiving with me? I didn't think so. But I'm, I'm, <laughs> they don't just jump them out. The, 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 they, they teach them some stuff before they put them out there. So I'm, I'm not going to just want you to go skydiving. Can I teach you some stuff before you jump? So the first thing you got to remember, somebody say recollect. Or I like to say like this, recollect. Recollect. They remember your past. What they're doing, they're recollecting. Can I tell you what the Greek word for name is? Like we all that scripture says, 
We can have all things that's up in the name of Jesus. The word name, everybody say name. Name. Write down the Greek word for name. Oh, no man. Oh, no man. Oh, no man. Oh, no man means everything that comes to mind of when you think of it. Mm. Everything that comes to mind when you think of it. Can I tell you your name is a database? Everybody say my name. My name. It's a database. Yeah. If you blind, and me and my dad are still side by side, and somebody say Clyde, and you're blind, you wouldn't know which one you're talking about. But even if you're blind, and you experience me and my daddy, if you're blind, you, when you say Clyde, you ain't gotta say junior or senior, because when you say Clyde, you're not really saying Clyde, you're thinking about everything that recollect in your mind that you've been through with them. Someone say, your mind, your mind is a database, a database. with names with that names. cover the database. So whatever you last did is what I knew you for. So don't get mad at me when I look at you and all I see is slut. Don't get mad at me if I look at you and all I see is dope dude. Don't get mad at me if all I see is you an alcoholic. Even though I don't say it when I say your name is what I'm thinking about you. And when you come to me trying to sell me something, I'm sorry, I don't see that. All I see is what you last did. And, and listen, don't get mad when I don't want to do business. That's why some of y'all didn't start your business outside of Cold Spring and then come back to Cold Spring. Why? Because Cold Spring know you. Yeah. Right. They knew you. And they don't even want to do business. I don't care how much you to change. You better show them something first before you start saying, y'all y'all mad at me. Y'all got mad at me. Yeah, y'all got mad at me. And y'all know all what y'all thought about. Clyde doing the church? What you said for? Because everything recollected in your mind that you knew Clyde did. No, we gotta see some first. Yeah. Brother Ken said, Brother Cloud, hey! <laughs> yeah, hey! Yeah. Why? Because I did enough to purge out the whole collection of faults that he had about me. You mad because you ain't got enough yet. You just saw what God said you were supposed to believe it. Baby, do something. Do something. Stop talking about it, be about it. Expecting folks who know who knew you to expect something new from you. Yeah, 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 yeah. All they know is the cussle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You dating who? <laughs> well, no, you don't get it. You don't get it. Don't try to get them to get it. If God told you that that man was yours, right. yeah, yeah. ain't your job to explain it? Yeah. Why? Because they don't know what they said. Yeah. Well, God, somebody say, don't get mad. Because all they know, all they know is your past. No past. All they know, get my scripture, get my scripture. All they know, listen, is your, is your third through the fifth verse. All they know is when you was in the cave. All they know is when you was scratching yourself. All they know is when you was lying. All they know when you was cheating. All they know is you was stealing. All they know, I said, all they know. They know that, but they, even though you sitting there dressing your right mind, <laughs> He faking. No, I don't care if she do go to church. She faking. Yeah. I know her. No, you knew her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know your six through twelve first. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't know your six through twelve first. They, they didn't see. They showed up in the fifteen. They missed six to the fourteen, and now you trying to explain it to them. Don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What was six first? He saw Jesus and he ran to him, got on his knees, then began to pray to him and say, Lord, Lord, forgive me, Lord, help me. They didn't see you in church that Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They missed that Sunday. They, they, you didn't post that on Facebook. They missed it. They don't know. Yeah. All they know is your, your third through the fifth, they missed your sixth through the twelfth. Yes, sir. When Jesus delivered you and set you free and cast yeah. your demons into peace, they fell in the shit of forgiveness. They forgot your set free Sunday. Everybody who should have been there wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. That's the one something everybody missed. Yeah. But I was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what's on the inside of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come home telling my husband I'm different. He don't believe me. Yeah. Why? Because the same woman I saw leave, the same woman I see yeah. come back, yeah. but he don't realize you yeah. tapped something on the inside yeah. and something trying to come to the outside. Yeah. I don't know what you know, but I know what I feel. They don't know your 15th verse. They don't know your 15th verse. So, if you're not really sure, if you're not really sure your 15th verse, you'll quickly slip back to the 3rd to the 12th. 
That's all they know me anyways. And you would tape up your last experience instead of unwrapping and walking into your new breakthrough. Uh -huh. Because you remember what they said. Yes. Girl, did you, you hear me last Sunday? Girl, yeah, I saw you, but do something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I saw was a, a cry out, but I seen you fall before you get up the same. Uh -huh. But they don't know it's something on the inside. Yeah. That when I go to sleep at night, I can't sleep no more. When I go to work, I can't. Listen, it's something been woke up on the inside. I don't know what it is, but I know I ain't going back. Brother King, I'll never forget that night that Marshall said that, listen, I told my wife, baby, I'm changed, I'm changed, I'm changed, I'm changed. She likes, yeah, whatever. <coughs> because she didn't know what I felt. And she'll tell you now, nah, I done did something. Yeah. And baby, am I the same man I was before that day? And listen, some of y'all trying to figure out what my change was. What about your change? Yeah. What about your change? It's, it's my change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she went home and said, baby, I looked at my feet, they look new. I looked at my hands and they did too. I've been born again, again. Write it down. Someone said they're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid. Write the word afraid down. Afraid. And remember who they are. They are those who knew you. Mm -hmm. The one who knew you is afraid of you. Now, there's two types of categories of people who are afraid of you. Two of people who are afraid of you when you change. The first group of people who are afraid of you is folks who love you but don't know if they can believe you. I've been there before. I've helped them out before. I supported them before. You gotta do something. You gotta, I don't know. I made my boy. I made my daughter. I made my girl. But you got it. And he said, I'm wondering, but you my mama. You my wife. My best friend. For you. The problem is you're looking for a praise before you made a change. Yeah. Mama, I promise you different. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. My mama and my wife go, baby, baby, just baby, I'm different. I'm, <laughs> you know what I get a fake. I see it, baby. And now you're stuck with Brother Devin is your God. Uh -huh. God, I know. Yes. I know I'm changed. I know. Yes. Ain't the God was in Cleveland. I know. Yes. God said, do something. Boy, I changed you. So now that you hear from folks from the outside, so you finally hear what I made you. Everything I did for you was for your good. Now take the voice on the inside and use the tools on the outside. Do something. If you're an author, write a book. If you're a singer, sing a song. If you're a lyricist, write some music. Stop trying to 
broadcast your change. Be your change. And if you wait for the broadcast to give you the past, you will never change. If I say, can I, listen, I'll forget today I want the Coast Spring. I'm going to drive way down to Poker Road and down to uh, Cooper Road and say, Daddy, me and my daddy working on a, on a trailer. Say, Daddy, what's that, boy? Tell mama, come back, I got to talk to y'all. What's up, boy? I'm going to be a pastor. It's something like you say, okay, I'm going to work on I'm going to say, <coughs> do you hear what I'm saying? Open the church then. Preach a sermon. Show me something. Don't tell me something. Yeah. I want him to get excited. I called Pastor Horton. He didn't get excited. I called Beulah Mace. He didn't get excited. I'm like, forget it, man. My wife said, boy, what you doing? Why? Because I see something. Yes. Somebody said they're afraid. They're afraid. The first group of people are afraid that you're going to fail them again. And everything in you need to be understanding. Because you know you better than they know you. But somebody said, second group of people who are afraid of your potential. When they look at you, they know that you're going to be great at whatever you do. And so they keep calling you who you was because if you become who God told you, you're going to make me look bad. <coughs> and so they're afraid of your potential. And so they keep calling you who you was. Oh, she ain't this and she ain't that and he ain't this and he ain't that. Someone say, they're afraid. Right. Uh, if you become who God called you, you're going to rain on my party. You're going to make my mess look like mess. Somebody to come preach to you today. It's this point here. You ain't here to impress or depress nobody. Right. You ain't here to impress no folks who love you. And you surely here to depress somebody who's already doing something. You hear for one reason, one reason only. It's to respond to the voice. To know there's something, there's something in me. I don't hear all y'all. Yeah, I gotta go work. Go to the club. There's something. I know I gotta go to work. I'm taking vacation. Two weeks. Why? Something. Something in me. I know y'all y'all preach. Preach four weeks. Preach four weeks. Evangelist, you all open up. Somebody teach Bible study, middle elder ladies, minister my house. Man. Baby, y'all go ahead and preach. Because I'm not gonna stop until I find out what it is. Listen, Brother Ken, I know for a fact that it's like that because Paul says, the wrong that I want to do, I don't want to do, I end up doing. The good that I want to do, I cannot do. But I do find a law on the inside of me that wanna do God's will. Yes. When I'm in the middle of the club, I feel like that I don't belong here. When I'm laying in the bed with him, I feel like I don't belong here. When I'm at work every day, I feel like I don't belong here. You got two choices. You can sit or you can jump. But I guarantee y'all in 2020, I'm not sitting no more. Why? Because something on the inside. Yes. Trying to get to the outside. And I may never see. I 
may never see. Come on, come on, we'll go. It's your ball. No, oh, it sure is. <laughs> I may never see it again. But I know it's there. And I don't want to get rid of all the experiences. I just don't want to take them up. I need every one of them. I need every one of them. I need every one of them. But it don't make me. It's just an accessory to me. When I'm going to write my book, I'm going to write my book about it. When I sing my songs, I'm going to sing my songs about it. When I open my business, I'm going to fix them. Those are my responses to the inside. But it's not the inside. The reason why I can write a book about this power of my pain because this is my pain. Somebody says something inside. Something on the inside. So I come to challenge you today. We got three weeks in the series. We're going to stop after the series. We're going to bring in Monica Lewis. We're going to talk about how we jump. But before we jump, can we spend the next three weeks trying to figure out what is that thing on the inside? Yes, sir. Next week, we're going to talk about listen to them who know you. And then we're going to talk about respond to what God said about you. And once we really find out, I challenge you for the next three weeks that you don't just go home and just say, okay, I went to church. I'm sending you home with homework. To find some time to remember the last time you felt something inside. And ask them, what did it tell you to do? What did it say to you? What did you suppress because you feel like people are going to laugh at you because, man, you're crazy. Maybe so hard, me to show y'all hard enterprise on the wall, but I guess I don't care if I think I'm crazy or not. I believe hard enterprise is in effect. I've been researching all this time. Yeah. And I want to find out my DBA. I'm no, I live in this, and I don't care if y'all like me or not. Yeah. Why? Because there's something on the inside. Yes. And it's not locked to a pulpit. It's not. It's not. But listen, but I promise you I won't abandon the pulpit to do it on this side. I can't. Because it's my first call. That's my second call, my family. My third call is to the world. Change my mind to change. Oh, you can't change the world as long as they see you in God as a church. Amen. Father, right now, everybody's 